go on? Right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so here we have the most common problem that you'll see if it's not in the if it's not police cruisers and trains, it's called the sliding ladder problem. So again, no sliding ladder equals we don't want that. No, sliding ladder is happy. You do they're all happy. So far the Pythagorean theorem no, the the last one is not happy. And part of this one is not happy, but the first part is, is so this happy. Is like a 20 foot ladder is leaning against a house and the base starts to slide away. By the time the base is 7 feet from the house, the base is moving away at the rate of 48 feet per second. So you see the picture there? See the picture? Is everybody okay with the picture? We have sliding down like this. What? Yeah, it's sliding. So, see, see the purple. So that's going this way. That's going Wait, that is way. Is it moving 48 feet on the house, or the base is moving? The base is moving away. So this speed right here, dx dt, is going to be 48. And it, how is it moving that fast? I don't know. Feet per second. <laughs> I don't know. That's really fast. That is really a big bad. ladder. What? That is big bad. ladder. It'll kill you. Slippery house. Slippery house. I know. Is there any friction at all? We're ignoring. Maybe they'll catch a window on the window. Oh, wow. All right. What do we know? We know f equals 7. All right. We also know that uh, so it's dx dt is 48. Dx dt is 48. The 25 ladder on the ladder problem, the ladder is fixed. Okay, that ladder is not changing. The ladder, yeah. So the ladder is not changing at all. So that the fact that it's 25 feet means it's just plain 25 feet. And so at the particular point when x is 7 and the hypotenuse is 25 feet, what is our y value going to be? The Green theorem. Wait, so we know the ladder and what else? We you know the ladder, and this is asking when x is 7. Okay. Uh, I, I don't see a picture. Is x that whole bottom line? Yes. And y is the whole top line? Yep. So we're solving 24. But we know the ladder, yep. so what ladder are we solving for? Why? So why? Because the Pythagorean theorem is 24. So y is 24. Wait, is that picture accurate? Out to my king. Out to my king. Probably not. If the ladder's moving down. <laughs> slide down. If the ladder. So the ladder is sliding down here as its base is sliding out this way. But the, the base distance is seven, right? That's, That's what we're going to look for. When it's seven feet away, this is 24 feet away. Okay. Nice. Right at that point. Yeah, it looks like it definitely looks different as far as that goes. All right, so this is um, where we're looking for. What's the question? How fast is it moving down, right? So we're looking for dy dt is what we're looking for. Wait. Oh. Okay, so here we go. x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. The 25 is not moving. Pythagorean theorem at oh, the time okay. when x equals 7. Because no, we're looking at that particular instant. Yep. Yeah. So it's equal to 0. So it's equal to 0. That's right. So we have 2x, the x is moving, dx dt, plus 2y, the y is moving, dy dt, equals 0. Wait, why is it 0? Because the latter is not moving, not changing size. Okay. It's not changing, so it's zero. And now we just put in our values. So two x is seven. Two times seven dx dt was what? Forty eight. Forty eight plus two y was twenty four. Dy dt is what we're looking for. Equals zero. So when we solve this out, all out, we're gonna we should get negative. So dy dt equals negative 14 feet. Uh, let's see, feet per second. And we're gonna use this for the next part of the problem. This, so this for this first part is the type that would be on a multiple choice. Okay, it would stop there because that's kind of a fast one when you, once you know how to do it. 
it's, it, you're able to do that within two or three minutes. If this were a free response problem, now you would use that number into the next part. Oh, so that's just the rate of change. That's the rate of change of the ladder at that particular point. And notice it's negative because it's oh, coming it's down. It's at you the top of the ladder? the Y, right? Yeah. The, y, the change of the, the rate of change is, in the Y. Right? Yeah, it's sliding down. It's sliding down. That's why it's negative, negative 14. Okay. So the base is going 48 feet per second, and this is going 14 feet. Yeah. Yep. At that particular moment in time, at that instant. Well, I mean, it's not going down 14 feet per second the whole the whole time. It's just at that particular moment. It's just going with this. This is like, we measured it right there. Okay, so the next part is fine. It says, at what range is the area of the triangle formed by the ladder wall and ground changing at that particular moment? What's the formula for area of a triangle? Base times height one-half. Yep, yeah, one-half base times height. So for the next part, we're going to still use this. So area, area equals one-half. In our particular example, it's y times x. Product, or, yes, product rule. So we're looking at what rate is the area of the triangle formed. So we're looking for dA dt. Can I write on here? Is, that, is this whole thing on? Okay. So what we're looking for, it says, is what rate is the area changing at that particular time? So it's the first, one half y times the derivative of the second. It's dx dt plus the second, which is x, times the derivative of the first, which is one-half dy dt. And we have all those values. We have y. We have y. y is 24. We have dx dt, that's 48. We have x, 7. We have dy dt, which is negative 14. Where does it go? One half dy dt come from. One half dy. Uh, when I when I did this, um, I used this as my first term. Oh, you can't see that at all. I used this as my first term for the product rule. So first times derivative of the second plus the second x times derivative of the first one half dy dt. Okay. Product rule. Good job. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's bad. Yeah, 576 plus negative 49. Okay. So this is the next part, which is at what rate is the area of the triangle formed? What rate is the angle between the ladder and the ground changing then? I guess. Okay. So here's the when you're faced with an angle, it means that you have to use either sine, cosine, or tangent. In this particular case, the x and y are changing. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use tangent. Okay, so tangent, when you're looking, we're going to be looking for, I'll put that up here, we're looking for d theta dt, so we have to get theta by itself. So tangent theta equals opposite over um, adjacent, so it's y over x. To get theta by itself, I have to use inverse tan. So theta equals inverse tan of y over x. So that's a common th that's a common practice that you have to use if you're looking for theta. You're going to have to turn it to a trig function and then use your inverse functions to get it so theta is by itself if theta is changing. So now we can find, um, so now that we have this, we're going to find d theta. Let's see, I'm going to put it over here. d theta dt inverse tan, if anybody remembers, is 1 over 1 plus your u squared, y over x squared, times the derivative of u. Do you remember this? Okay. Wait, is that taking the derivative of? Inverse tan, our inverse tan derivative. Remember, it's 1 over 1 plus u squared times the derivative of u. And unfortunately, what rule is this? What am I going to use? Quotient. So it's going to be bottom, x times the derivative of the top, dy dt minus the top, y times the derivative of the bottom, dx dt. What? Who was with her behind her? Tommy Damon and Haley. Oh, OK. All over x squared. 
Oh dear, do you think we need to change my math? Have you checked my math again? So now you have all those values. So all we have to do at this point is put in the values. So it equals 1 over 1 plus 20. Oops, I'm not a 1. 1 plus 24 over 7 squared times 7 times negative 14 minus 24 times 48 all over 49. And I think that it's, <laughs> the answer I have here is minus 2 radians per second. I got you. You got that? You gonna check for me? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> minus 2 radians per second. I'll double check. Is this why we have a calculator set in here? Yeah, we always have a calculator set in radians. Yep, we always use radians in every degrees. Okay, I have one more. <laughs> yeah? So that whole thing is just like taking the inverse, uh, the derivative of the inverse. Yes, that's all that was. Yeah. Now this last one's a good, it, again, the last one is just because drawing a picture. But here's how you draw this. An iron Spherical ball. iron ball <laughs> is 12 inches in diameter, is coated with a layer of ice of uniform thickness. If the ice is melting at a rate of 11 inches cubed per minute, how fast is the thickness of the ice decreasing when it's 4 inches thick? Okay, here it is. Here to here is 6, and that's x. You have to be a little bit careful because, well, the, the diameter of the iron ball is 12, and so halfway across is 6. And then on ice, we don't know the thickness of the ice, that's our x. <laughs> the radius is, the radius of our <clears throat> spherical iron ball with the ice, <laughs> with the ice on it, is 6 plus x. Are we okay with that? Okay, the whole thing, the little ice ball, the radius is 6 plus x. All right, so, so what? A bad one? No, the problem is that. That's the hard thing to do. Once you have this, you're really fine. It's really at this point. And what are we looking for? You're trying to find the first one is, well, how fast is the thickness of the ice decreasing? So what are we looking for? We're looking for dx dt. That's what we're looking for. And they give us that the volume, I think the volume of the whole thing, right, is changed, that the volume is melting at a rate, the ice is melting at a rate of 11 inches cubed per minute. So dv dt is that. So dv dt is negative 11, whatever the rest of it is. Wait, is just give it x4? Minute. Did they give it to you? What? How fast is the thickness of the ice decreasing when it is 4 inches thick? So would x be 4? Oh, uh, yes, it's going to be 4. At that particular time, yes. Remember, we have to do the whole thing. You put in the 4 at the very end. So this is finding if you did no 4. Like the general equation. Yes. Okay. So volume. Because I know all of you know this, right? What's the volume of a sphere? One third. Yeah? R squared. It's four uh four thirds pi r cubed. <laughs> Okay. So, ready? Wait, what is that other one? Four thirds pi r cubed. That's the volume of the whole thing. What is that rational? Is that just no? Is that the volume? Yeah, but general, if this were a question like on an exam, they'd give you that. You wouldn't okay. be expected to know that. That's a little bit too much. Yes? Is the last one on the right that the derivative of the volume is last? Yes, the volume is changing at negative 11. The volume of the whole thing? The whole thing. Well, the ice, but the whole, it's actually the whole thing. I don't think it's very well written. Okay. And then the, the other, inside, yeah. are there supposed to be three d blank dt's? So is the other one a zero? Run that back, one more, what? 
<laughs> Sorry. I'm not like five again. You know, like in the first problem, we had D, X, D, T, D, Y, D, T, G, T, T. Yes, this we is only have one variable. variable. We only yeah. have one variable. Well, as the volume is changing and the, the radius is changing, so we're going to we're gonna replace first volume equals 4 thirds pi, and then this one is R is now 6 plus X, 3. Because we, we're looking for how X is changing. This is a pretty, um, not a pretty straightforward derivative. So this one, the three comes down, so we have four pi, six plus x. That's a uh, squared derivative. What's inside is dx dt. And now we can put our values in. We know this is minus eleven. We know this is four, so that's ten squared dx dt. And then uh, at the very end, it's negative 11. This is really ugly. Negative 11 over 400 pi is dx dt. You know what I have written on here? I have written on here for the homework. The homework doesn't like the negative sign. If perhaps you have a homework Please problem like this. this interruption. Watch With the all negative members sign. of EPS. Please go to the end of the at this they time. Were called, they were called. They were called. Yeah. The intent is you just put 4 in for x? Yes, because at the particular moment when x is 4, the volume is changing at that. And then you're done. Um, on the homework, uh, this must be a homework problem. This must be why I have it up there. So, uh, surface area, just if you need to know that. The next problem, I'm not going to do this problem because I want to talk to you about your homework issues. But surface area is 4 pi r squared. How do we get rid of the And then you just side? take the, do the same thing, take the derivative of that. And, and put in that, put in dx dt, put in that value to get your answer. Wait, 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 wait if the homework doesn't like negative signs, they come out with negative 11 over Yeah, 12. try plain, I have it written down here. Homework just doesn't like the negative sign. So then you just not like the negative. Then if the negative doesn't work, try the negative first. If it doesn't work, try positive. positive. 